Oh, I don't know if I moved. So for the first time ever, I I was I present I kept presenting last period, and I was presenting to the second period meet during third period. So that's the first time I've done that the whole year. So it was great. All right. Um, entire screen. There we go. Share. Okay. Here we are. I'm going to try to get the reindeer antlers off for tomorrow because Christmas ends today, right? So, the, uh... all right, so tomorrow we'll get the reindeer antlers off. And I'm back in my office. I've got my new rolling chair, okay? Um, so, I kicked Andy out. All right. Okay, we are going to talk about the DISC method today. Okay, I'm going to go grab my, I forgot to grab my cheat sheet here. All right. We put like the special wheels on this chair so that, because we've got wood floors, and so it's like really slippery. It like goes as soon as you sit in it, it like takes off. But I will tell you, it's better than sitting, even though my background is prettier with the um, with the fabric behind it, it's better than that chair that I sat on for a semester. Because that was a really hard stool. And it's better than the sofa I had to sit on the last two days. So, though I had to enjoy the sofa while I still could because it's gonna be gone on Saturday and we get a new one. I'm excited. It's the first, I feel like an adult now that I had, I've actually bought a new sofa. All right. So we are going to calculate the volumes of revolution using definite integrals and the DISC method. Okay. Um, so the DISC method is basically instead of the cross sections um, being flat on the surface, we're going to rotate. Okay. And the cross sections are going to be basically circles. Okay, so this is and it's going to be a disc because your cross section is hitting your x axis or your axis of revolution. We're going to go really simple today and just we're only doing two examples and just going to be it's not going to be shifted or anything. We'll get into the shift starting on um, Friday for you guys. I'm going to shut the door because I've got noise going on. Hang on. Okay. All right, so you kind of see this picture, and this picture is actually in your textbook. Um, so what's really going on is if we take a rectangle, and we've got the width, and then the length of the radius of the circle is kind of the height of the rectangle, or the length of the rectangle. And you have to envision, say that I should grab those props out of my classroom today. Um, yeah, I was down there copying for AB, and I should have run down and grabbed the... Um, the my my props for revolutions. Have you guys ever seen um, like the wedding bell? The, let's see if I can find it really quick. I don't want to take the whole period, but let's see. Um, wedding bell decoration. Okay, that right there. You guys seen those before? This is the prop I usually use. So when you open one of those like waffle decorations up, it's got like a line, okay, it's got like horizontal, and then you take it and you open it and it spins around. That's what we're doing. That's what we're finding the volume of, okay? Um, and stuff like that. And that's kind of the cool part about calculus is we no longer are confined to a cylinder or a prism. We can find volumes of odd shapes like this, okay? That's why calculus is super important to our lives, okay? So we can find inter volumes of things that aren't just normal, okay? But that's what's going on there. So we're revolving that, that rectangle around, and that's how we get a shape of a disc, okay? And we're going to take those discs, and we're going to add them all up. And remember, to we'll add them all up. That's where integral comes in. And that gets us the volume of whatever the solid is, okay? Um Remember the formula for area of a circle, hello Maria, is pi r squared and then times the height is the cylinder because really what you created here is this is a cylinder, 
okay? Because we had the width and the height, and then when we revolved it, we made it um, three-dimensional. So um, we are going to, so the, the actual formulas for this, and we're only gonna work horizontal today. We're not gonna worry about vertical, but there's a kind of a picture of each. So the horizontal is we take the, um, we take pi times the radius squared, basically. Um, the height part is the dx. So that's the change in, um, actually the height part is, nope, we're fine. Yeah, the height part is the dx, it's the change in your x, okay? So those are the two things that we're gonna work on. Um, whenever we see revolution, we always start with a pi. And then you know you've gotta take, this is basically your side length here now, okay? Or your radius length. Side length. Okay, so let's try a couple examples. So we're gonna use the disc on the first one here. Um, we're only gonna go, notice it tells us that we're supposed to be going between zero and pi. So this is the shape that we are revolving, okay? Our disc is gonna revolve around the, it tells us here, the X axis, okay? Cause you have to watch what it's gonna do. Good morning, David. Um, it's almost afternoon actually. Um, so it's gonna revolve around that X axis. Um, you know you have a disc because it is touching the axis of revolution there, okay? And this is the function we're doing. So that is, it's really top minus bottom again. My top curve minus my bottom curve and my bottom curve right now is zero, okay? So it's really, um, so my side length is sine of x minus zero, which I really don't need the zero. Okay, r is the side length, that's correct, David. All right, so I'm gonna ask a question in the chat. If I'm trying to find volume of a revolution, what do I put out in front of the integral symbol? Let me know you're paying attention the last few minutes. What do I put out in front of the integral symbol? All right, make sure you're answering in the chat so we make sure we're getting our credit for the day. We are definitely putting pi out there, okay? Um, what are my bounds this time? What bounds am I gonna use? Look at the problem. We've already kind of pointed them out. What are my bounds? Good job, zero to pi. All right, and then, what do I need to put on this? According to the formula we just looked at, remember it's based on the fact that it's a circle. I need the dx, that's right. But look at this formula here. What do I need to put on my side length every single time? Yeah, we gotta put a squared on there and then dx, okay? I don't know why my other stuff is coming up. There we go. All right. I'm going to simplify that a little bit before I try to integrate it, okay, because I am going to do the integration by hand this time. So pi, um, I don't really need the zero. And then when I square the square root, that should disappear. So I've got zero to pi of sine of x dx. All right, I know it's been a while. What do we get? Oh, Lorenzo knew what I was going to ask. It's not cubed because it's three-dimensional because we haven't integrated it yet to make it three-dimensional, David. It's still two-dimensional, okay? Um, until I actually integrate it, okay? All right, thank you. My next question was gonna be negative cosine X, right? Because I was gonna ask what is, you even heard like it in my voice, I was gonna ask the question, right? Because it hadn't been a while. Um, the integral of sine is, is co sine is negative cosine. Actually, it's not negative cosine x, right? Oh, yes, it is. Negative. We're integrating. We're good. All right. So I got to go from zero to pi. And remember with trig, we got to be careful with those zeros. So we got negative pi cosine of pi minus negative cosine of negative pi cosine of zero. So double negative will go positive. 
zero is out one up zero, out negative one up zero. I write it every single time and I've been doing this, teaching this course for at least 10 years now, right? So um, you've got to, uh, I write it out all the time. All right, so negative pi times cosine of pi is negative one. What's the cosine of zero? Tell me in the chat, what's the cosine of zero? All right, it is in fact one. It's always the X value when it's cosine, okay? Why is the pi negative? Okay, so let me tell you why the pi is negative. Because when we integrated sine, we got negative cosine. Does that make sense, Gabby? Yep, we put it out front. All right, negative times negative is positive pi plus one, and that should be, what did I do wrong? I didn't get the right answer. I lost the pi here. See that pi? I lost that pi. So it's one pi plus one pi, which is going to be two pi. Here we have a really good idea last period. Hmm. No, the other pi wouldn't be negative because let me go back through that, okay? It was a ooh, it was a negative because I subtract because of the operation and it was already had a negative in front, so they went positive. Okay. All right, so you guys want to hear my really good idea? All right, so you know that today is day 301 that we haven't seen each other in person. Okay, what day did we leave on? Ah, uh, yes, Pi Day, right? Pi Day. All right, so when we go back, <laughs> when we go back, whether we go back in February or March or April or May, whatever day it is, I think we should have Pi that first day we go back. Well, I'm sorry that you missed Pi Day. That wasn't my fault. I think we should. I'll bring the pie. Ice cream, but that wouldn't make, that's not math, as mathematical as pie. All right. All right. If we don't go back, I don't know, maybe we'll meet six feet apart in the parking lot and have pie, okay? Just for the seniors. Um, I think it'll be, we go back, and that my prediction is go back and do like the last two weeks, okay? So after the AP test is over. Um, so we'll just eat pie. Maybe we'll eat pie every day, okay? All right, but I don't know. I can't really, I, I don't have control over that. So I only have control over the fact that we, we get, we maybe we'll meet in the parking lot one day after if we don't get back in the classroom and have pie together, okay? I'll bring the pie. All right. Let's look at example two, okay? All right, the people that meet in parking lots and eat pie, David, is that the ones you're talking about? All right, so um, we're only gonna do that after, you know, that after, we're, we're after the cases go down. Um, no, Lorenzo, you cannot use the DISC method on cross sections. Okay, so if it says cross section, you need to use the cross section method. If it says revolution, that's where you start using what disks and what we're going to see is washers in a few days. Okay, all right, let's take a look at this next one. It does help to draw the graph on these. Um, you guys, you still need to know that top minus bottom thing, and I'm sorry, I've got the gardener here. Happy Wednesday, right? Gardeners and trash. Um, so find the volume of the solid form by revolving. That, there's your key right there. You know you're doing what if, whatever I see that word, what do I know I have to put out front? What do I have to put out in front of my integral whenever I see revolving? We know we've got to do pi. Good job. All right, so I can even just write that down, right? I've got that part out of the way. I know if pi has to go out front. Um, bounded by the graphs of this, and I should be able to. You've gone through enough math, you should be able to sketch that, right? So that's a parabola up one. So it should look something like this, right? Um, it says that we're bounded by y equals zero, which is the x-axis, which is the x-axis. 
And then it says we're also bounded by x equals zero and one, which means that the region I am revolving, let me use a different color, is this. So I'm revolving that around the x-axis. All right, so what's my top curve? Because I basically I go, I do the area, right? I'm gonna find like I'm doing the an, an area. Okay, good job. My top curve is the x squared. So let's just color code this a little bit. So my top curve is this x squared plus one. Technically, what's my bottom curve? It's not a trapezoid, it's a curve. My bottom one is, okay, it's the x-axis. Do I really need to write subtract zero? Yeah, no, I don't. Okay, good. I like the head nods. That's helpful. It's actually, because I normally teach from the back, I don't always see guys' faces. Here, I see the faces. It's great. Okay, um, so I'm just going to, I'm not going to worry about the minus zero part. And I, what am I supposed to do to this now? What's the operation I got to put on there? I think that some of you have that typed in already. It's a squared. And then as always, throw the dx. The dx, remember, is all of those disks lining up together, okay? Horizontal is like the horizon, right? The horizon is horizontal, okay? Vertical is a vertical jump, right? Vertical jump is up and down, okay? All right. Um, so we're going to integrate that. It looks like I should do a little bit of what did they do here? Um, the y axis. Oh, they wanted me to go around the y axis. I'm not going to do that. Um, notice here it says y axis. We're not going to worry about that. We're going to go around the x axis. So let's cross that out because we're still doing the x axis. Let's deal with that. We'll deal with y axis tomorrow. Or the next day. Okay. Yeah, let's foil it. Okay. Um, so we've got pi. If I foil this out, let's see, I'm seeing x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus one. Is that right? Double check my work. Yep, Gabby's giving me a thumbs up. Thank you. All right. Let's integrate this thing. So we've got x to the fifth over five plus two x cubed over three plus x from ooh what do you miss their bounds what are our bounds on this thing what should i have put you all put that in the chat when i noticed it didn't you all right Luis, did we get what you wanted us to wait on okay um, so now I'm going to put in that zero and that one in this case, because there is no trig. Is my zero going to matter? No, I don't really need to do the zero part because it's going to be zero, 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 right? So I'm not going to do the zero. I'm just going to do the one. So I'd have one fifth plus two thirds plus one minus zero if you really want to write it down. Technically, I stop there, right? I do not need to keep the calculation going. However, I believe, oh, I tried to do a web assign assignment and I don't know if it's working or not. Web assign is gonna make you go all the way, right? So let's practice our fractions because we always can use help on fractions, right? I know that this is 15 fifteenths. Let's see, 3 fifteenths and 10 fifteenths, is that right? So let's see, 25 plus three would be 28 fifteenths pi, okay? Um, on the AP test, you stop here. Okay. It, and again, it depends. If it's multiple choice, obviously you have to get to the right answer, right? But if it was the free response, you stop there. On the free response, we actually hope when they say set up, but do not integrate and we get to stop there. Okay. That's what we hope for. All right. So that is the entire lesson today, I think. Oh, get look at that. I didn't give you a summary. Bummer. No summary on that one. Did I put it, oh, 8.9 and 8.10 together. We're not going to do 8.10. We're going to save that for tomorrow in the interest of giving you guys some time. But I think we need to figure out the um, web assign thing really quick because okay? I need to get you guys back in. 
with WebAssign, the way it works is I have to redo, re, we have to re import ourselves into the course second semester. So let's do that really quickly. Um, so I think in Google Classroom, and I'm gonna try, it might happen tomorrow that I transition this to a new Google Classroom. So even if you've turned stuff in in here, that's okay, I'll figure it out, okay? But so if you've turned it in here already, don't worry about it. I've attached to the agenda is the link for WebAssign. So I'm just gonna grab that. And then you need to go to enter class key. And then we're gonna go back here. My class key is right here. You need the talk with the whole thing. It's not gonna let me copy it, is it? So you need that entire thing as the class key. I keep moving where the Wednesday agenda is. Okay. I can get it because I can cheat by doing this, but that's the class key. You need the number and the talkwits.ca. And then I'm gonna go back to web assign and that's what I would put in and hit register. Yes, Gabby, the answer to your question. And then confirm register, confirm to register. You want me to put that in the chat? I can do that. Let me put it in the chat. There you go. So put that in as the class key. I'll see what happens. Your instructor, so you need your student ID. It's not that. Now I'm part of the class. I'm going to have to delete myself off the roster. Okay. And then you should see that hopefully, I now have one person in the class. Hopefully your, your homework came up for today. Am I the only student in there now? Oh, I'm in second period. Apparently I I logged in with second period. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Did I give you the, I, was I in second period when I did that? I hope I didn't mix them together. Maybe I gave you the second period key. It's too late now, go ahead and go for it. Let's see, I have zero students here. Is this the same class key setting? Zero six. No, nope, it's the same one. Okay, that's the right one. All right, how are we doing? Are we doing okay getting in there and finding it? Did we? I guess I could have put the last slide in the chat too. Okay, that's the last slide. Yep, that's fine. If it won't load while you're on the meet, that's okay. I get it, it's slow. Okay, so do it. You can do it as soon as we log off here. Okay. All right, so I'm going to do the joke of the day because I think we need it. And he uses some kind of funny accent today. So um, let me hit the stop recording because I don't think.